Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at philosophy of history versus history of philosophy. Now, though they may sound similar, the history of philosophy and the philosophy of history are different topics. Simply, the history of philosophy is the study of what particular philosophers in the past thought or argued. Whereas, philosophy of history is a discipline which asks questions about our practice of documenting and drawing meaning from history itself. History of philosophy is something that might be practiced by people who weren't philosophers, just in documenting the lives of different philosophers and some of their ideas. Whereas philosophy of history is something that's very much within the discipline of philosophy. Though history of philosophy is important for doing philosophy, as we'll see. So, the history of philosophy is the documentation of arguments from particular philosophers and their influence on future thoughts and ideas. Since philosophy is often in dialogue with previous ideas or arguments, understanding the historical background for an argument is often essential to understanding that argument. This can mean that learning that the scholastic philosophers were attempting to reconcile the works of Aristotle and the Bible in order to better understand their metaphysical worldview. So if you want to understand the claims and arguments that St. Thomas Aquinas is making, completely separate from gaining an understanding of Aristotle and Aristotle's metaphysics, you're not going to do a good job. But it's also about learning that Epicurus was sick and in pain much of his life to understand his philosophy of pleasure in this kind of traditional Epicurean view, not so much as one of indulgence, like we might actually claim of Cyrenaicism, but rather one of freedom from pain, because he was so sickly and so much in pain for so much of his life. So history of philosophy can help inform the philosophical arguments that we make and our interpretations of arguments and positions that are even held today. Philosophy of history does something different. So philosophy of history asks questions like, does history consist of maybe periods, individual actions, civilizations, or something else. What does history really consist in? When we're studying history, what really are we studying? Are we studying people? Are we studying things that were done? Are we studying collections of people and cultures? What should we study? It asks the question, does history have a direction or an end goal? Does history make progress? Have we, over the past thousands of years made progress in some way? Have we gone backwards? And what should we measure that progress by? Economists may tell you GDP, but philosophy asks the question, what should we measure that progress by? It asks questions of how can we know about history? Is history only written by the victors, as it might be? How can we really know what happened in a certain period of time from kind of an epistemic standpoint? What counts as justification for facts in the distant past? Are we allowed to have weaker justification for facts that are temporally distant from us than for those that are right happening right now? Now, we have not covered much of philosophy of history on this channel. And generally, it's much more common in the continental tradition than the analytic one. And I am steeped in the analytic tradition and would love to expand to more continental philosophers and more Eastern philosophers one day, when I run out of things to do on analytic philosophy, perhaps. And hopefully sooner than that, in all honesty. Uh, but Hegel did write a great deal on the subject, and he's one of the central philosophers in the philosophy of history. However, if you're interested in the philosophy of history, I would caution with starting with Hegel, unless you have a strong grasp of philosophy and a good sense of yourself in terms of reading very complex text. Hegel is famously, notoriously difficult to comprehend. I would recommend maybe starting with a secondary source that talks about some of Hegel's ideas first, and then accompanying that with a Hegel. Um, but... All of that to say, philosophy of history, very different from history of philosophy. Videos that, like our series on the four weeks of famous philosophers, that's history of philosophy. We haven't really done a good video that would symbolize the philosophy of history, but maybe we'll do one soon. Watch this video and more. Oh, first a question. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. What is more interesting to you, the philosophy of history or the history of philosophy? 
Write your answer in the comments below. Now, watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.